We investigated the Prussian blue material class, which consists out of octahedrally coordinated iron atoms that are interconnected by cyanide ligands. This leads to the bonding motive of an iron atom, cyanide ligand, iron atom along all edges of a cube. Additionally, the transition metal sites for us occupied with iron are split into two sites due to the significant difference in chemical environment for the carbon and nitrogen coordinated iron atoms. In 2015, good enough found out experimentally that the um, modification actually changes from a cubic to a rhombohedral one when at high sodium concentrations. Interestingly, the battery performance of the material does not is not significantly altered when moving between these two modifications. So here we employed our density functional calculations to calculate both modifications and then compare the electronic structure and the movement of sodium ions in them. Although the energy density is actually lower compared to the current lithium ion technology, these materials are considered for stationary large-scale grid storage solutions that would be used to handle the diurnal shift in peak energy production to peak energy demand. Here it's advantageous that Prussian Blue has a very stable framework, therefore we see an extended battery lifetime. Also, the uh, material is made up of abundant and uh, non-toxic elements, so we see no supply nor health risk even in the long term. And we also have a very cheap and easy synthesis, making the, uh, the material economically viable. The largest challenge by far was a simultaneous description of the electronic structure and ionic movement within the framework. At the start of the study, we decided to describe this material with a generalized gradient approximation functional and we added a Hubbard Hugh correction to the iron D states. We also decided for the Hubbard Hugh parameter to be separately applied to both iron sites to account for the significant difference in chemical environment between carbon and nitrogen coordinated iron atoms. This framework offers a reasonable computational time for sufficient accuracy. Problematically, this approach also was not usable for the calculation of migration barriers, as we saw huge artifacts in our NEB calculation. So here we had to adopt our approach to the presented challenge, which is uh, fully laid out in the supporting information of the paper. So we found that we could nicely describe the electronic structure of the material as well we were able to see the shift in energy levels between the two different species of iron atoms. This is a current explanation on why these two species are actually oxidized or reduced separately. Furthermore, we could show that when you're going from the cubic to the rhombohedral modification, the d orbitals of the iron atoms have to be reconstructed. This is simply due to a deviation from the formerly perfectly octahedral environment and can be explained by ligand field theory. Secondly, in the cubic modification, sodium is occupying the faces of the iron cyanide ligand iron cubes. This position is called 24D after Wyckoff. Sodium is residing in the 24D position in the cubic modification, but when you are then calculating the rhombohedral modification, it changes out of these sites. So the question arose, why would it leave its minimum energy position? What we found is that the site is actually compressed by about 30% when changing to the rhombohedral modification. So it's not that sodium is finding a new and better position within the rhombohedral framework, but actually the opposite. Sodium is forced out of its minimum energy position and then makes due with the formerly second best position, which are the vertices of this cube near the iron, uh, nitrogen coordinated iron atoms. Lastly, we calculated the energy barriers for the migration process in both modifications and saw that were, they were almost identical. These uh, findings are also in uh, agreement with the experiment as there it was, it was already proven that a change in modification does not significantly alter the battery performance. Mm -hmm. 
Our findings are actually material specific and only valid for the Prussian blue material class. Um, we can easily adapt it within the Prussian blue material class to different charge carriers, which we already have done so in the past. We uh, could validate an already published relation between the ionic radius and the preferred site within these materials, and we would like, if time permits, to extend on this study in the future. Furthermore, we can see that the general calculation framework can be easily adapted to every pristine pristine and crystalline material. Our group actually upholds a lot of cooperations with experimental groups and we can adapt the same framework with only slight changes for the problem at hand. We noticed during the study that there's actually a lack of uh, calculation framework to consistently describe the electronic structure and uh, ionic migration within this material as highlighted before. Furthermore, we noticed that the standard approach is actually uh, adopted from calculations of Prussian blue, which has a significantly different electronic structure than the Prussian white and Prussian yellow structures. Therefore, we plan to present an optimized calculation framework for the whole Prussian blue material class as a battery material to the community. Moreover, we are also looking at the degradation process of the framework in alkaline media and at the uh, diffusion of different charge carriers which uh, we want to assess for uh, the Prussian blue material as a multivalent battery cathode material.